Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm sitting in front of my air conditioning unit because I've got to do some house maintenance. This is not one of my usual car videos because recently I had an issue with my air conditioner and it ended up leaking condensate all over the first floor and messing up my ceiling. So today I'm gonna be installing a drip pan and an extra safety switch and I'll show you guys what to do if you have the same setup at your house or something similar or you don't have a safety switch at all. So stay tuned. So my house has got this vertically mounted carrier unit right here. As you can see, it's mounted upstairs on the second floor and it's got this return vent right underneath it. And here inside, you'll see that I have a condensate drain right here that drains to the ground and it goes to the first floor and outside the house. And then you got your clean out right here, which is the top part that you actually pour vinegar down every couple of months just to clear out and clean out. So on this side over here, I've got the safety switch for the condensate. And what happens is if your condensate pan gets clogged up over here and doesn't drain, they'll actually fill up the secondary hose and then trigger the float switch in there to stop the unit. On these types of units, on the vertically mounted units, the condensate pan is actually a little U that goes around the unit and then it drains out to here. There's not much area of surface for it to collect condensate and it has to drain properly all the way. On my unit, I was having some weird issues. I was, I was actually tripping this float switch a couple of times in the last few weeks and I was wondering what was going on because when I opened this thing up, it was actually clear and there was nothing wrong with it and I actually poured vinegar and I did all I needed to do to clean it out but then I ran it the other day because we had a lot of people over and we were running this thing all day and it was getting a lot of condensate and at the end of the day we noticed there was a leak or some water coming from the ceiling and I realized this thing was overflowing. This is the back side of the unit here and I actually got water back here in the carpet. I've been running a fan here for the last two days with the carpet lifted up and the pad lifted up just to get some airflow underneath to clean that out. So that was a big mess right there. And then my first floor, you can see on the ceiling there, it's dripped down and I actually had to punch a hole in that tape to actually let it drain out so it wouldn't damage any further on the ceiling. I had to fix that little corner on the ceiling and that little seam that I had to cut out right there, but that's gonna be a pretty easy fix once I get to it. All I have to do is just plaster it, retape it, and then get the texture back in and paint it. So the way the safety switch works is this little float right here, once the water gets up to a certain level, it goes up to here and it actually stops the circuit right here. And this thing is a really simple open and closed circuit. All it is is two wires. And it's actually in line with the power for the thermostat so it's a pretty easy connection once you figure out the wires for your thermostat so after this thing happened I had to come up with a solution just in case this thing leaked again and my float switch in there fails on me like it did this time so what I did was I was researching just getting a regular condensate pan the size of my opening right here which is 30 inches wide and it's like 40 inches deep so I started looking on Amazon and I found a bunch of different condensate pan options they were a little bit expensive they were from 60 to like $150 for an actual AC condensate pan then I came across this I have a very similar thing for my washer that's sitting under the washer just in case the washer ever leaks so I went ahead and actually measured that thing and it was actually a perfect 30 inches that would fit right into this hole. These things are pretty much a commodity item and they're only 30 bucks. So this thing was like 30 or 31 dollars and it actually has the dimensions on it. It has an inner and an outer diameter. What I cared about was the outer diameter because I needed to actually fit inside of there snugly and then not interfere with anything else. So this one was the perfect size, made in the USA, commodity item for $32. If you guys need something like this, check out the links down in the description. In addition, I picked up an additional safety switch. This one's actually a floater designed for a condensate pan and it's the same switch and the same brand as the one I have in there. Since I already have a float switch in there that's already doing the job, all I have to do is connect this in line in series with that one so it actually has two switches so both of these have to be down for the unit to run. So if either one of them trips high water, the unit will shut down. The only thing I need to do for this one to fit it onto here since it's designed for a metal condensate pan, I have to actually drill two holes onto here so I can mount it into here. Not to take a screw and just drill it straight to the plastic on the top edge of this to actually get it to work. And then once we do that, I'll go ahead and wire this in line with soldering and heat shrink. If you guys don't already have a safety switch, the easiest way is to actually access the control part of the panel right here, which is the top section of this unit. And there's actually a hole on the side over here 
that's already free that you can actually fish the wire through. That's what they did over here for my unit. So my wire comes up the side here and there's actually a hole up there that it goes right in perfectly. As you can see, we're inside the blower section here and the control section. And you can see all the jumbled mess of wiring that comes in here. You can see that wire off to the side there I was talking about that comes right through the unit onto the spare hole. And it goes right into here and it looks like it just connects to the 12 volt power for the actual thermostat because it's the red wire with the fuse on it. So if you ever have issues or your unit stops running, the first thing you always wanna check is a safety switch if you have one already. If you don't have one, this is how you wire it up. So you just wire it to one side with the red and the other side of the red goes to the other end right there. So they just wire nut it all together here. It's pretty simple install. So periodic maintenance on these units for the condensate line is pretty simple. You wanna use just regular vinegar. This is just regular household vinegar. Get a funnel that you can just put into the condensate line and just pour like a cup or two of vinegar in there every couple months to make sure that you clean out the condensate line and keep it clear of any contaminants and buildup. That way you don't have a backup later on to cause an issue of flooding this unit. With my issue over the weekend, this thing was really clogged. I usually use like a vacuum and I just use the blower side of it to blow the air out of here, but it wasn't dislodging anything. So what I had to do was I actually had to get a little piece of tube right here that fits right into the hole. And then I had to use compressed air, like actually 90 PSI of compressed air to actually unclog it. And for a setup like this, putting compressed air in there, you're gonna need like a little piece of hose or something like this that fits snugly on the inner diameter of the tube and can build some suction and some pressure because what happens if you just put air straight into here, most of it is gonna go back into the unit and you're gonna have a big old air gap and that's where all the air is gonna go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just mount this thing. It's gonna be in the lowest corner that I feel that this thing is gonna be at, which is the corner that all the water pulled up when I found it. So I'm gonna put it right about there. So that's pretty good there. Uh, you might have to just bend it a little bit just to give it the angle. I still need to drill the hole to get the wire through outside the unit so I could connect it up to the actual old switch over there to have it in line. So we got it all set up nicely now. It's got enough where it won't overflow the pan when it trips it, which is perfect for what I need right here. So we'll go ahead and put it straight into here. So once we're inside, you can see it sits in there nice and snugly, exactly 30 inches on this particular duck, which I think is a standard size duck. It fits in here. It doesn't cover the whole thing, but I don't need it to go all the way out here just because the opening up here for my actual inlet, the water is gonna drip right over here. So it's still gonna be inside the pan. Same with the back way. And then that back corner is where I think everything drips to or flows to. So that would fill up first if I ever have an accident again. So what I'm gonna do now is pull the wire up to here. I have to actually drill a hole off to the side and then connect to the wire that's already there for the other safety switch. All right, we got everything drilled through and fished up and out to the side right here now. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just wire this up to the existing switch in line. I'm gonna do heat shrink and solder since I'm OCD like that. And then even that hole that I drilled out, I'm gonna use some butyl glue and just kind of plug that hole up. So it looks like everything went smoothly with the soldering, got everything in there nicely so it looks nice and clean. The only problem I had was I ended up blowing that fuse I had up top because I didn't really disconnect the power 
or anything and when I soldered it I think the 120 volt that goes through the soldering iron ended up popping this so I looked up that fuse and it's actually a 3 amp fuse not an E fuse so I don't have any 3 amp fuses right now the only thing I have is a 5 amp so I'll just go ahead and use this it's not even the same type of fuse as this one this is like your standard old school car fuse this is a newer style car fuse right here but it should still plug into the spades for now for a temporary fix until I could get a three amp. All right, we got everything back up and running. The air conditioner is back on. The fuse that I put in worked. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and just test this. What I'm going to do is go in there, push that float up. If it disrupts power to the thermostat, then that's good that that thing is working. And I'll go ahead and check the other one too, just make sure both circuits are working. Tap that up. And then I heard the unit stop. So that's a good sign right there. So the switch worked perfectly fine. The Ecobee is rebooting itself. Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this video on adding that extra layer of protection for my air handling unit, especially on the second floor. If you guys don't already have a safety switch for your AC, I highly recommend adding one or adding two like I did, especially if you have the design like I have where the drip pan's underneath and you're depending on that little tube as the overflow. Uh, as you can see, my overflow tube failed on me on this occasion, causing a bunch of damage to the ceiling that I got fixed now. If you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel to stay on top of all my different DIY videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Remember guys, for all these different types of DIY videos, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll talk to you guys next time.